Tonight we, uh, we are uh, saying goodbye to one of our pastors, and uh, this is not something that we're accustomed to uh, at New Hope, uh, but we understand that um, sometimes other things happen. So I want to just say a couple words to Mandy and Jeremy. Now, my, my connection with Mandy and Jeremy goes back quite a ways because this was the, their church they were attending here. Let me just let you do that by yourself, Brian. <laughs> You want to work out with me in the morning? <laughs> put, some, put some meat on your bones. When, when we came here in 1997, um, Mandy had just graduated from high school, and her and Pastor Brian had gone off to master's commission. And when Mandy and Jeremy had finished their uh, master's commission, they came back here and interned with me for most of a year. And uh, to realize how long ago that was, that was the year that Jeannie was pregnant with Brianna, who is now almost 17 years old. So uh, a lot has changed in that time, and I think they're going to show you some pictures that will show you how much they've changed, but I haven't changed a bit in that amount of time. Uh, and, uh, but I, I appreciate these guys so much. And, um, you know, 17, 15 years later, or whatever, however long it was, it's been a couple years now that you've been here, we have been so blessed to have you here at our church, and uh, just your heart for people, and love for kids, and I know a lot of those kids that were in our youth group back then, that you were helping with youth, uh, now have their own kids, and a lot of those kids you're pastoring there, and those families, and uh, it's been a blessing. Thank you for coming here, being here, loving our people. And uh, you've been a blessing, and we hope that we've been a blessing to you. And uh, this is a tough thing to say goodbye, but we know that God's got special plans for you. Pastor Weaver, I'm, oh, we got a video. That's what's next. I don't have a schedule in front of me. Are we ready for that? All right, here we go. Thank you. 
because he's my husband. Sometimes God tells you to go somewhere. And sometimes we've learned about our Bible stories that tell us to go. That people in the Bible, God said to go and do something. Okay, like Moses or Noah to build the ark. Okay. Okay. Hold on one so God told Pastor Jer or Jeremy, Jeremy, Pastor Jeremy, but Jeremy and Pastor Landy that it was time for us to go. So we are moving to a place called Texas, which is kind of far away from here. So I wanted to let you guys know that I love you, love you, love you so much. And I have a special story to share with you tonight. And I will be here on Sunday to say one big more goodbye to you, but this is my last Wednesday night with you. And you're going to have a new teacher come in eventually, okay, a new pastor, and she or he is going to love you so much as well. Oh, you guys are so precious. Okay, so are you guys ready for my story? It's really cute. Are you guys ready? It's called Gotta Go, Buffalo. Have you ever had to say bye to somebody? Maybe a grandma or grandpa or your mommy when they drop you off. you got to say bye, but you know you're going to see them again, right? Yep. And guess what? I'll come visit you, okay? So, this is how it goes. Ready? This is really funny. It's a, it's a, open the flat book, ready? It says, see you later. I love this book. I can't do what God wants me to do. That one anointed child that when she announced it started wailing has my spirit because I did the same thing. And I cried a bunch of tears. Pastor Mandy and Pastor Jeremy have been awesome and we love them and known them a long time and actually knew Pastor Mandy when she was very little. And uh, she's just, she's really amazing. And uh, I know that they're torn, but they also feel that this is what God needs them to do, and we're supportive. And we're going to miss you terrible. But we're going to invite them to come. And uh, do you all need two microphones at one time or just the one? Okay, we'll have you come. And then we have a little, uh, in a minute, we'll have a little gift for you, and then we're going to pray for you too. But I just want to say thank you, Pastor Mandy. I, I know that everybody that I've ever talked to that knows you just thinks uh, you done a wonderful job and uh, I believe that our church was instrumental in helping you uh, uh, get a vision for the future together and I'm tr trusting that there's going to be just some great times together God bless you kiddo I love you. thank you I love you too oh that video was so sweet some of you are very sneaky getting that video footage from VBS <laughs> I always joke I'm always the one taking all the pictures I probably got 200 pictures on my phone of all the kiddos, but I never think to get any, in any of them with them. So wow, what a day it's been today. We've been anticipating this day now for a couple of months, and I had to keep pushing the emotions away this morning as parents came through the line and kiddos came through the line. I had to give some last hugs to people. Um, so Pastor Jeff, you actually said some of the things I was going to say about our background, because you know, I think it's important that people know that we just haven't been here for the last couple of years you know, and came from who knows where. Like, this is our foundation, is New Hope. And not everybody knows that. But I just wanted to start off real quick with a little bit of humor. This was back to Pastor Jeff days when he was youth pastoring, and we were interning under Pastor Jeff. And so, Bree, bring up the picture. I want to show you guys how far we've come. The beautiful um, geek night. This is <laughs> some fun stuff that Pastor Jeff used to do. And this was, I believe, the week before we got married. Yep, so this was downstairs in the student campus across the way. Um, so this was probably about 18 to 20 years ago. Yeah, 18 years ago, um, this picture was taken. But basically, we met here. We met at youth group at this church at New Hope, and um, we've come a long way, I hope you all think. So anyway, we were called to ministry while we were in youth group here. I know I was a senior in high school when I felt called to children's ministry, um, and Jeremy was also called around that time. Um, we fell in love here. We got married here. We interned here. It was great. So now bring, bring up um, our intern picture. There you go, guys. There you go. For all of you that remember us from back then, check out those wool sweaters. 
<laughs> We're pretty proud of those. That was probably straight up year 2000. Yeah, Maybe. okay. <laughs> but no, really, okay, so you can take those down now because nobody wants to look at those all night. I told Jeremy we should have provided a more current picture, but you can just look at us here. Um, anyway, but we just wanted to really get across my portion of this is just to say to you guys, D the DNA of New Hope is inside of us, and it always has been. And um, kind of part of our story is that we left here shortly after being married, and for the next 10 years, Jeremy and I did youth ministry, and Jeremy was the youth pastor, and we had great times there. It was quite the ride. Um, there were ups and downs, twists and turns. There were, a, you know, share our fair share of hurt in ministry. Um, during that time, we had three little babies that are not little anymore. A lot of you guys have gotten to know them and love on them, which is so special. Um, but basically, there came a point where we said, you know what, we need to take care of us in some situations we had gone through, and we didn't want to get bitter at ministry or the church. We knew what God had called us to, but felt like it was time to take care of our little family. And so that started a small, I guess, sabbatical that turned into about six-ish years um, when I ran into Pastor Weaver. And if you haven't heard the story of two years ago, don't cry. Make me cry. Pastor Weaver will tell you it if you haven't heard it already. But basically, ran into him, and I ended up here. And it was out of the blue. And it was one of these situations where Jeremy and I looked at each other and said, can we do this again? Can we go back into full-time ministry? Can we go back to New Hope? We love everybody here, but gosh, we've changed. There's a new church now, and there's tons of people. And will we succeed there? Will we be okay? And after about three months of discussion and praying and talking and praying and talking, we said, let's do this, let's take the plunge, and let's go back. And you guys, it's been nothing but a pure joy and honor to serve here and to see the new friends that we've made. Sorry. To see the old friends that we got to pick right back up with again has been such an honor and such a blessing in our lives, you guys. Our kids have been so loved on here, and I just want to thank every single one of you that have gotten to know our kiddos and have loved on them and shown them what a healthy ministry looks like. Because, I mean, pastor will say it right from the front, you know, pastor's kids aren't always treated the best in churches, and New Hope knows how to take care of pastor's kids, right? Can I get an amen from the pastor's kids? Okay. Yeah. Um, so anyway, I'm getting off on a tangent, but basically, here we are. We have been nothing but blessed. We had no intention of leaving, ever. We thought our roots were here, this is home. My mom's here, my grandparents are here. Like, everybody's here. And, you know, most of you know we just bought a house last year. I mean, we didn't think we would go. But God has a way of interrupting your plans. And as soon as you plan out your life, he's like, um, no, actually, this is what I have for you. And you kind of get shaken up a little bit. And that's been us the last several months. Um, so if you would have told me two years ago that I'd be standing here tonight talking to you, telling you we were about to embark on this journey that quite honestly, a part of us is scared to death. We're leaving home, we're leaving everything we've known to do something that God's told us to do, and sometimes it's hard to obey and do that. But real quick, before I pass the mic over to Jeremy, I just wanted to tell you, working with the volunteers and the children um, here has just brought so, many, so much enrichment to my life. So many laughs, so many tears, mostly tears today. Um, <laughs> good tears. But throughout all of it, God has been reminding us of his promises in our life, and he's brought up different situations from the past or people that have spoken into our life or things we've written in a journal, and he's reminded us of those things, and he's stirred it up in us again. And I just want to thank you guys for being a part of that and being a part of that journey. Um, and so I'm sure it's fun for some of you to look back 20 years, and we are just like the only youth group here, us and Brian and Missy, a few of us in the room, about 10 of us. And now what New Hope has become and what, how God has blessed it is so cool. So thank you for being a part of our journey. We feel your prayers. We know you have our back. And we'll be back to visit. When we come here, we'll come to New Hope to see you. So I want to pass the mic over to Jeremy, who I'm very proud of. Yeah. What? You want to say? Yeah. Do you want to say more? No. You can talk like <laughs> okay. You want. Super proud of my husband. And, um, you know, we're following. God has a call on Jeremy's life as well, and both of us, and we're going to continue doing ministry, and I'm super excited to see what God has in store for him, too, back in full-time ministry, so I'm going to pass it to you. Okay. Can I sit down? No, I want you to stay with me. I mean, you can't. I, actually, you can just stand right here. You're, it, I look way better when you're next to me. Pastor Weaver reminds me of that all the time. He's like, Jeremy, you married up big time. And I said, yes, I did. He goes, that's the best move you ever made. I said, yes, it was. 
and everyone knows that. <clears throat> um, just to reiterate what Mandy's already said, but every volunteer that, that we've been a part of and every youth that's worked with Mandy uh, over the last two years, everyone that's gone through those doors in that children's ministry area, we are so grateful and so thankful for everything you've done. Um, today, uh, Pastor Hawkins was talking about first impressions and that area, that is the first impression that a new family gets. It is so important that that is the face of New Hope. Uh, why is our float so amazing every year after year on the 4th of July? It's because we put our kids on it. We've got some of the best looking kids in the state right here at this church. Um, so keep having kids. Um, that's always a good thing. Now I'm, starting to, now I'm starting to sound like Pastor Weaver. Keep having kids. Martha's, um, uh, Smith's, everyone else. Okay, no, just kidding. Um, he's, like, he's like, no, not having. <laughs> Anyway, I, I just want to say thank you for allowing us to come in and partner with you. Thank you for believing in us and allowing us to um, lean into you as family. Because God knew that we needed this time to remember what we're called to. Remember that, that we're, we're being sent, we're not leaving. And that has been a key thing for us. When we started talking to Pastor Weaver about this, it was hard. It was hard to recognize that this call really is a call for our family. It's not just for me. It's a call for our family. Um, and with that, we're excited to see what God's doing. We're excited to see how God's taking care of New Hope kids, just like he's taking care of us. And so with that, I just wanna, I just wanna share a couple things um, so that our faith can be stirred together and that our faith can be built together because that's what this is for. That's what this room is for. That's what this church is for. It is designed to build, encourage, and send. Um, I was really challenged during the missions month is when I really felt like God was seriously calling me back into full-time ministry. In every message, I kid you not, it felt like the pastor was up here talking, whether it was Jeff or uh, Pastor Weaver or Pastor Hawkins, any pastor that was standing up here on this pulpit, I felt like we were on a one-on-one -on -one conversation. I couldn't get away from it. It was like, go, go. And I was like, stinking people, are you kidding me? You're preaching. Like, and I, I just, it, it just was resonating so much in my heart. And I wanna encourage, our hearts and our family tonight, that that is what God has called us to do. Here in Urbandale is called to go and to minister to people here in this town in your own way, in your own fashion. It is called to get up and it is a call to action. And it's really easy to find the will of God because it is very bold and, and is very big to see. God's will is very easy to see. It is another thing to obey it. It's hard to obey God's will. But when we are in the midst of family like New Hope, we can obey easier because it's easier in larger numbers. And I wanna encourage you guys to continue to move in your faith and to move into action. Our hope tonight is not to be sad, it is sad, um, because we're leaving a place and, and you're sending us. But again, like Mandy said, the DNA of loving people, of supporting people, of serving people, and showing up for important events in people's lives that goes with us everywhere. Every youth ministry we are a part of, we stood at the back of every door that we, that we were at, and we said goodbye to every youth and every adult leader and every parent that walked through that door. Why is that? Because it was modeled for us here. We knew the names of every student. Why is that? Because the pastors know the names of every parishioner in this room. Because it's important. Because people are important. And so that DNA carries with us. We go with you in heart. And it's true, we do. Um, so in, in Proverbs, actually in John 14, verse 25 through 27, I wanna to read to it just real quick. It says, um, John 14, verse, what is it? John 25. All this, this is in red, so Jesus was speaking. He says, all this I have spoke while still with you. But the counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. 
I do not give you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. This is a life verse for us. This is a verse that we take to heart dearly. And I wanna encourage you that whether you're in a place of, of action and moving forward in your faith, or you're just starting your journey, or wherever you are, the counselor, the Holy Spirit, we just got done going through a four week message with Pastor Weaver on, on the Holy Spirit. The counselor, the Holy Spirit, will remind you of the things that he has placed inside of your heart, deep in your heart that he wants to unlock, that he wants to challenge you with, that he wants you to minister through and, and minister to other people with. It's his spirit, it's his heart. And so it's the peace that we have as we step forward in this journey that we know that God has a place for us and he's calling us to a place and that we have his peace. It's not our peace, it's not our understanding, it's God's peace that he's given us. It's his understanding. And it goes back to Proverbs where it says, um, we teach this to the fifth graders, Pastor. Uh, I, got a, I got the chance to be in with Lydia in her fifth grade class and all her, her girls. It says this, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Leaning into someone is, is not exactly easy to do. You literally have to try to do that. You really have to lean on them, and they have to lean on you. Leaning into God is what this church is about, is providing a place so you can lean into him and learn the things of Jesus. And trusting God in all your ways, acknowledging him in everything that you do is important. God has, show, God has shown himself time and time again in our lives in many ways, in many areas. For example, when we put our house up for sale, <clears throat> we, put, we did it for sale by owner, so sorry for every realtor that's in here. We love you. I do apologize. I'm sorry. I see a couple over here. Uh, I'm just saying we, we were just trying to get as much money out of it as we could. Um, and it sold in 10 days. One person came through our house, and one person asked about our house. No one else even asked. No one else even called. No realtors showed up. One person. And that one person bought our house. And we said, okay, Lord, that's a pretty good, pretty good odds. Those are some serious God odds in this time. Like, okay, Lord, and it sold for just 4000 under asking price. And so we're able to use that. And we're like, that's amazing. And I was like, I have a work van. I said, Lord, I need to sell that. And I prayed about it, and I thought there was one person I was going to talk to. I talked to that one person, and they said, sure, I'll buy it from you. What do you want for it? I said the price. It said sold. Who d it's just crazy stuff, you guys. Little things like that. I say little things. We just sold the house. That's not little. It's big things like that that God is continuing to show us his peace. So as we walk this path out, God is showing his peace. He is showing his reassurance that what we're doing is, is a good thing, that what we're doing is is his will. And I just want to encourage everyone tonight that we are all part of humanity. The story that, that we're in is, is, a, is a large story, but we all have a part in it. And I, I want to speak to the part where it's, is, in every story we have a good person and a bad person. You doing all right? Okay. You sure? Okay. Um, every, per, every story has a good person and a bad person in it. And that's, that all comes from the Bible. It all, comes, it all comes straight from the Bible. Every story in Hollywood all comes from the Bible. So here's the reality. Is the only difference between a hero and a non-hero is action. That's it. The only difference between someone that makes a difference in, in, the, in the Hall of Fame in Hebrews 11 is action. So I'm calling our church to action. I'm calling ourselves to action. That we live out our faith. If there's dreams that have been placed inside of you, act on it, just a little bit. Do something a little each day toward accomplishing that God-given dream or that God-given hope that you have inside of you, and it will be accomplished eventually. It's just action. That's the difference between heroes and sidekicks <laughs> and people that don't really do much with their life. It's action. So. I wanna call you guys to action where you're at to continue to move forward in what he's calling you to do now. Don't forget what he's called you to. 
This church needs to continue to be filled every Sunday, every Wednesday. It needs to continue to be filled. Why is that? Because it's an action call. It's a call to action because there are many more people that need to hear what we have in our hearts. People need Jesus and we are the ones to do it. So it is our job to get out in, in your way, in your fashion, how God has called you to be and how he has called you to anoint and how he has called you to do your things. That's how you need to act out. You need to do those things that he has called you to do. Leaning in him, trusting in him, doing those things. And that's how you're going to become a hero of the faith is those things. So that's it. It's short, it's sweet, and we believe that God's got our back. We know you have our back, and we're excited to see what God is doing in our life. And we, we are humbled by the fact that we've been here for two years and that you guys allowed us to come in and you've loved on us so much. So thank you for everything you've done and for who you are and for being real, authentic, and genuine.